reputation of our university just as much as you the should. It's your does. degree, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, the first thing, remember the first thing I said was please educate yourself, uh, decide what you think, decide not just what you think, but but how does that fit into your range of values and how important is the issue to, to you? Now, I expressed a hope more than anything else, not a plan so much, as that students and faculty should get together. I'll tell you what, there are faculty here tonight and there are students here tonight. You really need me to ask you to introduce yourselves to each other and write down each other's name and say, you know, let's be in touch. Uh, <laughs> all right, would you please introduce yourselves to each other? That was Carlton Floyd, the head of the uh, Academic Assembly. Uh, Look around somewhere near you as a faculty member. Uh, look around, it's like a church, right? Look around, shake their hand, and say hello. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, mean it, I don't mean to be facetious, but how else would it start? Um, or in class afterwards, just ask them. Let's see. You can ask me after I get my award. Hi, Professor. Uh, I so in the, I don't know if you, <laughs> sorry, I don't know if you saw, but in the most recent email that Dr. Lyons sent to the faculty, this is my own personal opinion, but it, it felt almost accusatory of the, of the faculty and the student body for misunderstanding her position and not, mm -hmm. you know, for having taken offense to this. And the, the email spoke to some effect of that we need to together learn how not to be disappointed by these things in the future, um, which I, I found incredibly offensive. I won't speak for anybody else, but as a, as a student and as an educated individual, I felt offended, and we would not too, as, exactly, and we as students would not know as much as we do about the current situation had it not been for the uh, gracious transparency of the faculty. And so again, I thank all of you here and, and you um, for being open with us. But what do we do to show the administration that we are a concerned and uh, well-informed body who wants to be engaged in the situation? Don't agonize, organize. Um, organize. That's uh, Nancy Pelosi, by the way. Uh, what she said uh, in the run-up to the most recent election. Um, this is something I learned in the 60s. It starts with meetings like this. Um, we don't know how this is going to turn out. We have no idea how effective our voices, voices are going to be. Uh, it may be, it, in the end, it really will depend on how many people feel as you do, Greg, that, that you'd like to get involved, you'd like to do something, or as the lady did over here. It starts, uh, I can tell you from experience, um, that it starts just by deciding to involve yourself. Um, I wasn't exactly, I wasn't actually kidding about find a faculty member and speak with them. Find other students. Um, I would preface all of that, however, by saying please, please do educate yourself. In times like these, there are claims and counterclaims sort of that go back and forth. It comes with the territory. Um, do evaluate them. Use the critical skills that you have uh, been learning about. Um, and um, and then reach out. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Annie. Um, See how this works? That's right. It's AAUP dot org. Okay, AAUP dot org. And you can find out all kinds of stuff about shared governance and academic freedom. You'll learn about the guidelines that are accepted. Uh, uh, by all the major universities, not just in the U.S., but in Canada. It's become a world, uh, uh, world-class standard for academic freedom. Uh, it's a, a web address, aaup.org. Yeah, the American Association of University Professors. Okay, thank you. I believe we only have one time for one more question. Hi, Professor Thurber. Hi, Jen. Um, so my question is specifically directed towards you because you seem to have such a good uh, involvement in the things that have been going on. And I'm, I'm keeping up well myself as well. But I don't have 30 years of experience here. So um, Professor Lyons talked about in some of her letters the drag show that she allowed to go on on campus mm -hmm. despite the fact that it was uh, protested by the Alumni Association for Catholic Right, donors as well, and 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 in my experience as a student here, I have had my views challenged on a daily basis. Um, I definitely feel like I've received the kind of education that emphasizes academic freedom and does allow me to see all the points of views. 
um, how do I uh, balance that? And, and what's your opinion on why is it such a issue with Professor Beattie and, and not in so many other places? Yeah, Janet, um, I, the best answer I can give you is that it's an issue because President Lyons made it an issue. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't, I'm not privy to her thinking. Um, I know about the drag show. You would, that would seem to, to mean that, yes, it's true that we can go anywhere we need to go to try to understand ourselves and our culture, and yet this happens too. That's a real contradiction. I agree. And my, I could have 90 years at this university. I hope not. And, <laughs> and that would still be a contradiction. I mean, uh, and if you're trying to say, I don't get it, join the club. That's why I went through the various uh, communications uh, about and noticing especially what the president had to say, what the responses have been. And it's, um, uh, it appears, well, I told you what I thought. I think the president has violated academic freedom. I especially think that because of the USD's academic freedom policy. That blew me away when I looked at it. That it is the responsibility of the faculty to decide about academic freedom, not the administration, not the president. She does not have the right to single-handedly decide who speaks here and who doesn't. Mm. And, and, and Janet, why she chose to do things the way she did, I, I just, I, I would only be guessing, and I, I probably shouldn't do that tonight, so I, I, I join you, I'm, I'm puzzled too. But length of time at the university doesn't necessarily inc increase your comprehension. I, I <laughs> Gail, yeah. You know, at Berkeley, the students called out Clark Kerr and asked him to come out. Yeah. I mean, I think the president's action shows how phenomenal. See, we're already thinking tactics here. See how quickly that moves. Well, you know, you know? Out of touch that I can just do this because there's one angry donor out there, and there won't be any repercussions, which shows her incredible, you know, out of touchness. Yeah, I agree. And, I mean, I'm hoping so, there will be reper repercussions. I'm hoping that we will find a way to conduct ourselves such that this issue does not go away. I believe the president, I think the president has already, I think the president has already invited students to a meeting, but you see the difference? When students inviting the president to a meeting is one thing, the president summoning students to a meeting is an entirely different thing. I agree with you, Gail. Let's, uh, and that's another reason why I'm suggesting let's put students and faculty together and, and see. Let's ask. Well, we don't know the president's going to refuse that. You know, we'll see. Dr. Floyd has a comment back there. But you guys, are you going to let me get my award here or not? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I actually wanted to comment about when you began your college convention, uh, the uh, Gay Pride uh, drag show. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the lovely things about critical thinking is that you not only have to look at what's happening, but what's happening around it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people are unaware or don't think of the fact that the uh, WASP uh, accreditation board was here when or around that um, show. Mm -hmm. that they were in their process of deliberating about whether the school had, in their words, since 1991 or something of that nature, made progress mm -hmm. in their ability to embrace diversity here. Mm -hmm. um, their response, and I'm paraphrasing, and I suggest you go to the WASC website, W-A-S-C dot org, <laughs> um, and look at what they say. I mean, I, they basically say since 1991, we have noted the homogeneity of this university. Um, we have asked for you to diversify yourself, not simply in people, but in terms of perspective. And the only thing that we can really say since 1991 is that your rate of graduation for Hispanics has improved. <laughs> now, again, paraphrase it, read it yourself. Right? Um, so that frames that decision. It's also framed by the previous decision to stop a gay pride dance. I was just going to say that. Several years prior. That was the pressure. 
the students put that pressure. It was an unprecedented turnout at that dance. And the students brought in the media and the TV cameras were rolling that night. And guess what? They got the dance the next day. <clears throat> so again, the last thing Mark, and yes. Mark said this, and I want to reiterate it, do your homework. Right. That was brief, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Can I jump in? I think they jumped yes, in. No, yes. Uh, I just want to, I just want to, the issue that's being raised, and it's been said time and time again, but for me it really hits home, is this question around shared governance. Yeah. And where it really hits home is with my brother Carlton back here, because I spent three years on Pavid. The work we did on Habit was across campus, we included every constituency possible. The document went into the president, it was not on it. It was chained when the document was finally, when the final, uh, the, the recommendation to make the Center for Inclusion and Diversity number one, it was not followed. Number two, the director was removed. So, I mean, there's just another example that goes beyond the BD case, but it's an issue around inclusion and diversity. It's an issue of shared governance. And it's also an issue of academic freedom. Yes, yes. Those they're things directly go, related. All yes. those things are interrelated. And that's another reason why I think, I mean, it's not just the Tina Beattie matter. That's actually the tip of the iceberg. That there's a pattern of uh, this uneasy uh, model of, of shared governments that isn't really shared at all. This uneasy pattern of academic freedom that isn't really academic freedom of all at all. There's a pattern there. There's a gestalt. I mentioned the Ruther affair from 2008. There have been other instances. Faculty will know what I mean when I talk about the controversy involving the firing of the library staff. Or the Ireland Letters, a group of faculty went uh, uh, to Ireland to uh, study Catholic social teaching and came back and uh, were ready to give their papers and the president refused to allow them to be um, printed or to give to be given. There, this is all pat part of the same pattern, which is part of the reason why I think it's a mistake or that we should at least be very skeptical of any effort by the administration to investigate itself. That leaves us. There ain't nobody else but us. Can I get my award now? <laughs> That work? Okay. All right, I think we're done, right? Thank you so much, Shaco. Thank you so much, Dr. Thurber. And there are refreshments served outside. So oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good. Great.